stories have emerged over the Northeast's desire to become a free port, a plan which it is claimed could bring 60,000 jobs to the region. A bid was launched last Friday to create a virtual free trade zone in the region, which business leaders say could add more than £3 billion to the Northeast. A free port is a special economic zone where businesses can operate outside of normal tax and customs rules, with the Northeast's plan involving the ports of Tyne, Blythe, and Sunderland, plus Newcastle International Airport, the Nissan plant in Sunderland and the neighboring International Advanced Manufacturing. But Newcastle City Council leader Nick Forbes has become the latest figure to question the government's free port plans, which critics have claimed could create tax havens and simply relocate existing jobs to tax break areas rather than encouraging new invest. The city labor figure had said that local councils had put a lot of time into ensuring the proposed Northeast free port most closely matches our ambitions for how people will be treated, how people will be employed, and how the economy would work but that he still had concerns about the impact of the potential tax per country Forbes told the North of Tyne Combined Authority Scrutiny meeting on Tuesday that it was not a secret that I have got some concerns about displacement activity into Freeport area. He also raised fears about a potential loss of vital business rate income for cash-strapped local ca country Forbes said he was satisfied that the Northeast proposal would have the least disruptive or least displacement effect on existing activity and that, while he would not have supported the principle of a Freeport scheme if in government, it is the show and town and we have to be pragmatic but he added, the one thing that I am still concerned about, frankly, is the opportunity for businesses within a free port area to be given tax breaks that are not available to those outside of the free port area. You can see how that would be beneficial if it was for things like the purchase of equipment or machinery to help establish a manufacturing business. When it is things like a waiver of national insurance contributions for a number of years, you then have to question whether actually this is going to have the desired impact on the quality of employment practice that we country and need a lower. Former leader of Newcastle's Liberal Democrats, warned that there are a lot of pitfalls with the Freeport idea and that local leaders would need to keep the area closely monitored. However, she added that the Northeast does need to put a bid in to be a part of the Freeport program otherwise we could just end up as a corridor from a port to somewhere else. Sunderland MP Bridget Phillipson wrote last week that, while it makes obvious sense for local councils to try and secure Freeport status for their area, there is very limited evidence that free ports create. North of Tyne Mayor Jamie Driscoll has also been among the labor voices who have doubted the free port model, saying last year that some have simply displaced economic activity from one place to another or have been opportunities for tax avoidance, though he has backed the northeast areas across the UK are competing for at least 10 free port slots to be decided by the government, including Teesside where Conservative Tees Valley Mayor Ben Howkin has been a vocal supporter of the palace. After submitting the Tees side bed, he said, Make no mistake, the Tees side freeport will absolutely be game-changing for Tees side, it will turbocharge the local economy over the coming years and create thousands of good quality jobs for lo- When I set out on this journey three years ago with the now Chancellor, Many people said the UK would never introduce free ports and that no government would make such sweeping changes to trade and customs policy. But with our bid now with government we could have a decision in just a matter of weeks making Teesside home to the UK's first and biggest free port. Despite what detractors of free ports say, these free trade zones are not about reducing environmental protections or workers' rights. The government says that free port areas will benefit from a package of tax reliefs, simplified customs procedures, duty suspensions on goods and a streamlined planning process to aid brownfield redevelopment.